Welcome to the TerraSet tutorial video series. In this tutorial, you will learn about map composition in TerraSet through displaying several different raster and vector layers and various map elements in a single map window in order to produce the final map shown here. The first half of this video will focus on learning how to arrange multiple raster and vector layers in a map window, how to enhance the display of these layers using the blend and transparency settings, and identifying appropriate palette and symbol files for each layer. The second half of this video will focus on incorporating additional map elements to the map composition, including text, graphics, and legends. Our area of interest in this tutorial will be a region of public lands within the White Mountains in the state of New Hampshire in the United States. We will start creating the map composition by opening any one of the layers we wish to include. Let's open the elevation image. Next, let's add a hillshade image created using Terraset surface module to the map window. The easiest way to add another layer to the map window is by either holding down Control V to add a vector layer or Control R to add a raster layer. We will apply a grayscale palette to the hillshade image. The hillshade image is now on top of the elevation image. In the composer, the layer at the bottom of the list of layers indicates the layer that is on top of the map composition. If we want the elevation image to be on top of the hillshade image, we can change the order of the layers simply by selecting the elevation layer name and dragging it down to where the hillshade image is currently located. We added the hillshade image in order to better visualize relief. Let's edit the display settings of both the hillshade and elevation layers to produce a better visual result. We will equally blend the elevation image and the hillshade image underneath by highlighting the elevation layer in the composer and clicking the blend button. Before continuing, let's uncheck auto arrange in the composer. Auto arrange is checked by default to ensure that the map properties that we will later on incorporate are automatically arranged in the map window. We have turned this option off so that later we will be able to manually position the map properties without them being automatically arranged should we choose to expand or contract the extent of the map window. Now let's include the non-public lands image, which will be used to partially mask out all non-public lands in order to highlight the public lands. Cell values with a value of 1 shown in pink are non-public lands. Let's add this non-public lands image to our map composition, applying a new palette file. And zoom into the central area where there is a large amount of public lands using the Zoom Window tool. Now, let's adjust the transparency and blend settings through layer properties found in the bottom left corner of the composer. To do this, we will go to the Visibility tab and select Blend at 60%. We will also check the Transparent Overlay option. The next layer to be added is a Roads layer identifying primary, secondary, and local roads in the study area. We will apply a symbol file that illustrates each road type appropriately. Next, we will include a layer of major urban areas using a polygon symbol file that shows them in a pinkish-orange color. We will also add a layer delineating all surface water bodies in the study area using a symbol file that applies a blue color to them. And we will add a vector layer of all public lands so that we are able to delineate the boundaries of public lands with a black line. Now, let's add a text layer that identifies important areas, including town names and state parks. The 
Font colors and other font characteristics for this file can be edited through the Symbol Workshop module. Finally, we will add a point vector file indicating the locations of several town centers identified in the text file. Now that we have included all of the necessary layers and modified the display settings and palette files for each, let's begin to include other map properties. Start by clicking the Map Properties button in the Composer. First, let's add a few map titles. Click on the Titles tab. We can add a number of different titles that can later be arranged to different locations within the map window. Let's title this map, White Mountains Region, New Hampshire. We can edit the font characteristics by clicking the Select Font button. We will also want to include legends for elevation and roads in the map composition, so we will want to include titles for each legend. We can also change the background color for each of these titles. Let's click OK to see the added map titles. Properties can be moved by double-clicking each added element and dragging it to the desired location. They can also be expanded by dragging the corners and sides. Let's go back to Map Properties to finish adding the other map components. Now, let's add a north arrow by going to the North Arrow tab. You can choose from one of four preset styles and also select its color. Next, let's add our two legends by going to the Legends tab and clicking Visible for Legend 1 and Legend 2. We will select the Elevation layer and Roads layer. We can also select a background color and font sizes for each. All of the map properties have been added to our window, but we will now want to arrange them in order to create a more aesthetically pleasing map composition. After making additional edits and arranging all of the added map properties, we now have a final map product. To save this map product as a single composition containing all of the raster and vector layers, their associated palette or symbol files, their display settings, and all additional map properties, select the Save button on the Composer. Ensure that the Save Composition to Map File option is selected and save the composition so that you are able to access it again in order to make any necessary future edits. The other options listed here allow for exporting the map composition as an image file. For more information on map composition in Tearset, see Exercise 1-6 in the Tearset tutorial, which can be accessed through Help.